Hello! Welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the EBSCOhost databases for your research. The first step to beginning your research is always to go to our library home page at www.cuca.edu slash library. Once you are there, there are a couple of different ways you can get to EBSCOhost. The first way is to go to find an article. This page has all the library databases listed alphabetically, so you can click EBSCOhost from the middle of the page. From there, you will be presented with a whole list of databases to choose from. This is because EBSCOhost is a large database company that has a whole list you can select from to search multiple databases simultaneously. Each database in the EBSCO collection has a different subject focus. You could select every single database and then click continue. That would search them all at once. But this may lead to you getting a lot of results that are not quite relevant to your topic. Therefore, it is better to only select the databases that have a subject area that matches your topic. To do that, I'm going to go back to our library homepage. Then I'm going to select databases by subject. In the Databases by Subject tool, we can select our major subject area from the drop-down menu on the left side. For example, if your topic is medical in nature, you would select nursing. My topic today is about EMDR therapy and how it can help with PTSD. This is a topic that is psychological in nature, so I'm going to choose psychology as my subject. This is going to show me all of the best databases we have for that subject. Since we're using EBSCOhost today, and that is generally the best place to start, I'm going to use the drop-down menu on the right side to select EBSCOhost as a vendor. Now we're looking at the best EBSCOhost databases for psychology. Click on any one of them to connect to EBSCO. If you're off campus, you will have to log in with your CUCA College username and password. Once you are connected to the database, you will see a screen that looks like this. At the top, it shows us which database we are currently searching. The great thing about EBSCOhost is that we can search multiple databases at the same time. To do that, we're going to click on Choose Databases at the top. Now we see a list of all the EBSCOhost databases we have, but which ones to choose? Oh, that's right, we still have our Databases by Subject tool open in another tab. So go back to that and look at the other databases we need to select. I see here we need to check Newspaper Source, Psych Articles, and Soch Index. So I'm going to click back to my EBSCOhost tab and select those three. Newspaper Source, Psych Articles, and Soch Index. I'd like to point out that if you are looking only for scholarly, peer-reviewed articles, you can leave Newspaper Source off, since newspapers are not scholarly sources. If you need help identifying scholarly sources, please see my video playlist on that. I've linked to it in the description below. Okay, so now that we've got the ones we want checked, we're going to click OK. Notice that now if I click Show All at the top, it will show me a list of all the databases I am searching at the same time right now. Okay, so my topic was about EMDR therapy and how it can help with PTSD. So I'm going to type in EMDR, or Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing, and PTSD, or Post Traumatic stress disorder. If you need help coming up with search terms for your topic, or want to learn better search tricks for your research, please see my search terms and tricks video which I've linked in the description below. Now that I've typed in my search terms, I'm going to click the big green search button. It looks like I've gotten about 581 results, which is not too bad of a number. Sometimes you'll get thousands upon thousands of results, and that's okay too. There are a lot of ways to narrow it down. The first place you want to narrow down your results is over on the left side with the publication date. Most of the time you will want your articles to be the most current articles. The only exception is if you want to study older articles on purpose. 
for example, if you are studying the history of a topic. Otherwise, we want to slide this up to the most recent 10 years. Some instructors prefer that you only get articles from the past five years, so make sure you ask them how current they would like your sources to be. So I'm just going to slide this up to 2008 to get the most recent 10 years in my results. Notice that the number of results I have has now dropped. If you are looking only for articles from peer-reviewed journals, you can click the checkbox for that on the left side. We can also limit our results by source type. So if you need a magazine or a newspaper article, you can select those. Or you can select academic journal for scholarly sources. If you are getting a lot of articles that are not in English, you can select English as a language. Depending on which databases you are currently searching, there are different tools on this left-hand side. Some let you control the population you are looking for in your study. So if you're only interested in studies with men, you can select that as a gender. Or if you're interested in a certain age group, you can use that. Keep in mind that these tools are somewhat imperfect, so use them sparingly. There is also a section where you can choose geography. So if you are looking only for studies that are on U.S. populations, you can select United States. Once again, this is an imperfect tool. What I usually do is I do one search using that tool, then I uncheck it and add United States as a search term. But I only do this when I'm getting too many results that are in other countries that I am not interested in using for my research. Another tool you can use is the sort tool on the top right side. It is usually automatically set to relevance. Relevance is usually based upon how many times the words you searched show up in the article information. This works pretty well, but even still, sometimes good articles get buried in the third or fourth pages of the results. You can try a different sort, such as by the newest publication date or the oldest, and then you can also sort by the source. This means it will sort the articles alphabetically by the title of the journal, which they call the source. There are also tools next to the search boxes, which you can use to search for specific things. For example, searching by subject can sometimes help you find different or more relevant articles. Also, you should know that a regular search does not search within the text of the article itself. It only searches in the information about the article, such as the title, the abstract, the author, the name of the journal, etc. If you want to search in the text of the articles, you can change this to all text. Okay, so as we look through our results, we're going to look for an article that we like that is relevant to our topic. Once you find an article you like, click on the title of the article. This will take you to the details page, which gives you all the information about the article, including the article title, the author or authors, the source, which is the journal title, the subjects, the abstract, and the DOI. I highly recommend glancing over the abstract to make sure it is what you are looking for before taking the time to read the article. The journal title can be clicked, which will take you to a details page about that whole journal. This page tells you whether the journal is peer-reviewed, and how frequently it is published. It allows you to read entire issues of the journal. You can also click search within this publication to search for articles on certain subjects within that journal. Okay, that's it for part one of this tutorial on using EBSCOhost, choosing databases and narrowing results. I hope you will find it helpful as you do your research. Be sure to check out part two of this tutorial called Using EBSCOhost, finding articles in full text.